I see you. I see all the comments. I see everyone typing on their keyboard. Whoa, you bought all these tees, but you wear the same thing every day. Okay, you guys want an outfit change? You guys get an outfit change. Now, another YouTube comment that I've been seeing flagrantly posted throughout my YouTube channel is that I am an absolute idiot for spending so much money on old, dirty t-shirts. Now, of course, a lot of these comments come from the video where I showed off 68 vintage tees that I spent $10,000 on. And I figured this video is the perfect video to discuss this topic a little bit more in depth because we are going to be going over some of the stuff that I purchased on Whatnot over the last month because I've spent $20,000 for 350 pieces. I might be one of the only sellers on Whatnot that buys more on Whatnot than I sell on Whatnot. But of course, like I said, I do sell on Whatnot, so if you would like the chance to purchase any of the items I showcase in today's video, make sure you follow me on there, Thriftro, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W. I will, of course, leave that right here on the screen. And a link to my Whatnot in the description down below, specifically the top link in the description. If you use that link, you will get $15 off your first purchase. I started filming this video actually about two weeks ago. Of course, before I could release that unboxing, I got some more packages in. As you can see, uh, we got a lot more packages to unbox. These are all packages from last this one I dropped earlier, and as you can see, it's opening, so uh, that'll be the first package we dive into. This is the first tee. Ooh, nice little Willie Nelson. Hell yeah, brother. This is definitely the box from Nick. Girls Gone Wild film crew. I've spent a mini uh, two AMs on the public cable channels as a young lad watching the censored Girls Gone Wild promo videos. And then we have a, a banger for sure, a Soundgarden Bad Motor Finger. For now, we'll put that in the possible personal pile. Got a little art tee. The Malcolm X on the jerseys with Martin Luther King on the back. Oh shoot, another driving and crying. Dumb and dumber. Er. <laughs> this was like a surprise piece. It says something for the homies and you got the condom down there at the bottom. Oh yeah, this one's dope. You got the Yin Yang Fractal, the Jimi Hendrix Experience, big Dr. Seuss AOP with it going onto the sleeve. 2001 Backstreet Boys. Oh yes, this right here is my Sway. I don't remember who this is. It's like Jane. But as you can see, her titties are out. Red Hot Chili Peppers on the old Toltecs, extra large. I love the old Toltecs Cruise as well. Ooh, nice little sound garden. This one's a little thrash. When it's like a personal tee, I don't really mind if it has like holes, obviously. The Marilyn Manson I'm wearing has no sleeves and even like the neckline was removed. Big AOP NASCAR T. Oh, this is dope. The Fuji's vintage snapback with the double snaps. Where the wild things are. Vintage Aaliyah, rest in peace. Ooh, damn. 80s Metallica. Stone Cold Steve Austin. As you can see, his face is literally melting off. Okay. Getting down to the bottom and there's one T in particular. Oh, there it is. There is my baby. Yep, that's everything. 1994 bike week. Damn, the fade on that is gorgeous. Ooh, then we have the red hot chili peppers. This thing looks like it's gonna fit amazing. What's my favorite word? Yeah. The Bone Thugs in Harmony. This is one I've actually been wanting for quite some time. And then of course, the Marilyn Monroe. Super sick skinny puppy. As the philosopher Robin Hood once said, I see a skinny puppy, I'm trying to feed it. Pink Floyd, Division Bell. 90s Sublime Long Sleeve. Classic little Smashing Pumpkins, just say maybe. 1987 Cure, Blind Melon on the Brockham. That graphic is so hard. 1993 Depeche Mode, that one's sick too. Damn, this is gonna be hard to get rid of some of these. Honestly, I got so many bangers. My goal is just to sell enough to pay for the stuff that I wanna keep, which is almost always the goal. I mean, really, that's how a lot of this even started. Austin Powers Gold member. This Blink-182 was $50. Dollars. That is a crazy good price. Oh yes, this is the one I've been waiting for. The Falling Water Frank Lloyd. I got this for a crazy good price as well. Already on top, the Shroomy Tunes. I got this for $120. This is like a $250 shirt. Nice little chinchilla. Tatas. Marijuana tea, even though I personally do not partake in any substances whatsoever, including the marijuana, the Mary Jane, the Devil's Lettuce, nice little Stevie Nicks, Michael J. 
Jackson 1988 Japan Tour. Black Crows-esque motorcycle tee. Single stitch, read between the lines. Vintage Fresh Jive. Fresh Jive is like one of the OG streetwear brands. REM, sinkhole. <laughs> Next pack. Secret World Peter Gabriel. Pearl Jam Alive, another Pearl Jam. This one is so sick. No Code, The American Poet, Jim Morrison. 80s ACDC, well 80s Deep Purple. I paid $30 for that. Crazy. Dude, so many bangers, what the? Huge white zombie hit. You can see the front with the back spell out. Sid Vicious, crazy like American Thunder. Kentucky Derby tee. The Salvador Dali, this one is so sick. Dude, there are so many bangers in here. Heroes del Silencio. I remember when me and Paul went to Italy and we went to see the Sistine Chapel, which I've always wanted to see. We walked in the Sistine Chapel and you can hear the priests saying, Silencio! Oh, this is another Golden Era pack. I remember because of these Stussy pants. Beastie Boys, nice little anime tee. It is getting so freaking hot in here. Texco Racing, Robin Hood, single stitch, vintage movie promo. Nice little Dragon Ball Z vintage tee with the back hit. Low Rider classic, look at that. Look at that, that's nice and shiny. Oh, this one's dope. Brand new, made in the USA on the giant tag. Deftones worldwide. Fuck parental advice. Taking back Sunday, I got this as a gift for my homie's wife. We have Bart being a straight P-I-M-P. -P. They sent it in this like evidence box. Ooh, Calvin and Hobbs with the little revolver, the Honeymooners, Haley's Comet, the NYPD Bomb Squad, <laughs> Pro Call Harem, Brian Adams, Picasso Artsy, and it looks a little bit boxier, so I'm hoping that fits. Portrait of a Horse, Da Vinci, nice little vintage RCA T, Cinderella. Oh, this is tight. The Chicago's original gangster tour, the North Siders, South Siders, Al Scarface Capone Untouchable Tour, Vintage Wee T, another Harley T. My arms are hurt. It's starting to feel like I have busted. I said a thousand nuts today. Ooh, Namco Soul Caliber 2. That one is sick. Oh, this is from Gary V. What the f AOP Shark T. Brockham, so some music. Oh yeah, this is the Katie Lang. I just like that graphic. This one should be from uh, my family over at Rally Roots. This is an artist that does the keep on trucking. The Grateful Dead Fractal Digital Dead 94. Beautiful little vintage Zelda T. Oh, this is for my boy Paul. We got the ministry on the Stedman. And then, of course, because I got the highest bid, I got this Rat Fink Dickies button up. Nice little Blink 182 hoodie. One of the best Harley Davidson tees. Chicago Bulls Bart tee. Super chopped up. Sleeveless and necklace and bottomless. System of a down. It's getting hot in here. So take off on your clothes. Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls. Say no to crack. And then this absolutely gorgeous faded. Iron Maiden, shoot that. F Magic, sky's the limit, triple XL, just my size. Look how huge this thing is. Another punk rock is not a crime. We got the Bloodhound Gang, insane. Pink Floyd, painting number 215, RT. Then we have this Tupac, Thug Life on the back, made in the US and A. Ooh, this is a reference from Supreme, little 80s, go for yourself, turn it sideways. And then a little 80s uh, smithereens, especially for you. <sighs> Sex kills, go to West Point and live forever. Yes, the 80s black flag, I hope this fits. Oh, that looks nice and boxy. Damn, why did I that for six bucks? I was getting some steals in that live. Oh yeah, this is for my boy Six Tyler. I got this for a hundred and thirty dollars. Threw the hat in because you listen to Marlboro Man at least ten times a day. Shout out my bro Six Tyler Man. Why can't we be friends? I've been called the songbird of my generation. Scooby-Doo with the drink, Purple Passion, Spitfire on the Onita. I always love this little logo because the bike that I used to ride, which was a GT Power Series 1.0, which was passed down to me from my brother, had a little race plate on the front and he had like a Spitfire sticker on there. That is a cool REM. This is exactly how 
I like my shirts to fit nice and boxy. Although lately I would prefer no sleeves, but as we are approaching the winter, we gotta keep the shoulders warm. So these are some of the pieces that I'm going to hold on to for a little bit. I went ahead and unboxed the rest of the stuff. I'm gonna try to go over some of the key pieces, but of course, if you want to see every single piece, follow me on Whatnot because the vast majority of them, except for the ones that I'm actually about to show you right now, will be sold on Whatnot. Of course, as always, top link in the description. And if you use that link, you will get $15 off your first purchase. So come shop with me. There are a plethora of items that you can get for $15. And if you get $15 off your first purchase, that would make the item free. New York gun tee. It ain't Kansas. Nice boxy Grim Reaper tee. Yo, this is by far one of the best far side tees. Einstein discovers that time is actually money. And it fits oh so good. Rolling Stones thrash, but I got such a good deal on this. Honestly, I do not mind repairing this or just wearing it as is. Single stitch RT. Ooh, with the V loan on the forehead? Vintage V loan? Damn. BMX T, BMX tank, top and 70s motorhead. This thing makes me look Ah! Anytime I find that perfect tee that fits nice and slim and makes your boy look jacked. Of course we got a cop. Lords of Acid, you have a bunch of naked devils making out and another little naked devil on the back. Don't mind the little uh, banana. Tripping Daisy Band tee. Not a band you see a lot of tees from. One of the more iconic American Thunder subtracting the Thunder graphics. This got really popular because I think Playboy Cardi and Travis Scott wore it, but you got the pit bull on the front with the V-twin engine and the boot in the back. This is on a nice old 80s screen stars. And it says Necronomicon. Emerson, Lake, and Powell. Everyone knows the score. The original Bertha. One of the more iconic art pieces used on a lot of the Grateful Dead imagery, but this is obviously the art tee. This one's dope. 1991. Reduce, reuse, recycle. If you actually look in the graphic, you can see like different companies, Reese's, Fruit Loops, Energizer, basically like different packaging. And then as you can see, the continents are uh, made of newspapers. So 80s Alice Cooper, this looks nice, wide, and boxy. Yo, okay, I have the hardest Cash Money Records rap tee. It's actually one of those bins right there, but this Lil Wayne tee is so sick. You have his tattoos placed throughout the t-shirt. And then of course the mob, which you see on his chesticles, the cash money across the abdominals, the Brian Jonestown Massacre, the Salvador Dali art tee. Ooh, the Michelangelo art tee. On the cut jerseys, I've actually seen this in person. As I discussed earlier, when I went to Rome with my boy Paul, we got to see the creation of Adam in the Sistine Chapel. God knows when you don't tip. This Elvis is crazy. I'm on drugs. I'm all shook up. <laughs> Vintage Alien Workshop on the Belton. The Mona Lisa art tee. Arguably one of the most overrated pieces of art to see in person. It is so underwhelming. You walk in a big room and it's just this small, tiny little painting. Not as magical as you might think. This Van Gogh is so sick. Bauhaus, Cowboy Junkies. Every once in a while, I will not know something about a particular t-shirt and I try to put this out to see if I can source any information. So I am asking for your assistance. If anyone has any information on this piece right here, please let me know. Obviously it looks like a Warhol, but it is not. You have a little SE hit right there. It is on an old Fruit of the Loom single stitch. I'm extremely curious what this tee is. I love these vintage PETA shirts with the PETA sleeve hit. It's not the cat who needs his head examined. That graphic is so dope. So for the amount, it's like 350 tees and then 11, Sweaters, beautifully sun faded, center check on the white tag, which will get sold because it fits me a little bit too big. As you can see, there's wrestling tees, there's band tees, anime tees, like this single stitch Dragon Ball Z with the Goku hit on the front. No guts, no glory. The top half of this pile are all Grateful Deads. We got the Barbie tee, the Vampirella. Nature can't be restocked and the barcode goes into the zebras. We got two vintage Alice in Wonderlands. We have like the early 2000s one. And then of course we have the the OG single stitch on the black bar anvil. And if you like shirts like that, like I said, we got some Grateful Dead tees. Another Grateful Dead with a super sick back hit. Liquid blue AOP Grateful Dead. This one is so dope. Vintage little Jerry Garcia. Here's one I have not seen, the Grateful Dead Jesus tee. And you see that graphic inside the skull? I believe it is the exact same graphic on this Jesus tee right here, which you can just barely see because it's like this white print. Then you have some biblical scripture on the back. If you like Grateful Dead and you don't like tie-dye, I got a plethora 
of those as well. Grateful Dead logo hit. 1994 Grateful Dead. Another 1994 Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead Bear Bertha. Bradford Gallery, I believe this is Jerry Garcia on the back. This is a Grateful Dead Mardi Gras tee. This is one of the pieces I actually got for free. On whatnot, a lot of established sellers will start their stream with a giveaway. Sometimes the giveaways are good, sometimes they're not. I won that, I won a Bob Marley Rap tee, I've won a handful of other things. Genuinely, even if you do not plan on spending any money on whatnot, even if you don't want to follow me on whatnot, maybe you don't really rock with me like that, that's totally okay. But if you do like vintage clothes and you do not have the money to go buy some of these clothes or start a collection, I would say go bookmark some shows from sellers who do giveaways somewhat regularly in their stream, build up some pieces, and then you can take those pieces that you win for free and then start using those as trade bait to get the vintage pieces that you may not be able to afford. Trust me, I know that feeling of not having money and wanting clothes. That was literally like my entire life before I joined the military. And even when I was in the military, I would spend all my money on clothes and I never had enough to get everything that I wanted. So I understand watching these videos sometimes and not being able to get certain things that you may want. This tea's hilarious. Sunny side up. The best breakfast you can get. Some Harley Davidson t-shirts. This one is really good. And the fade on this one. Vintage Stussy on one of the better vintage Stussy tags. I think this is an 80s Woodstock. Yep, 1989. Three days of peace and music. What's that little design down there? That's looking dope. 80s ACDC, 1990 Kiss, 80s Pink Floyd, another 80s Pink Floyd. This Wizzo Bansy is so dope. That back hit is nuts. Pretty thrashed Sex Pistols. This Motley Crew is insane. Beautiful Pearl Jam. Led Zeppelin with the back hit. Sonic Youth, AOP Beatles, another Pearl Jam. Deftones, I love this Aerosmith tee. And this faded blue is freaking gorgeous. This Euro Pink Floyd is insane. We got like the Division Bell graphic on the front with this big back hit. This is probably one of my favorite Pink Floyds. I wish this was a little bit smaller. Blink 182, Rolling Stones, Black Sabbath, The Moody Blues, Depeche Mode. Here's another Woodstock tee. This is the infamous 1999 Woodstock. Look at that back hit. Nice little puss head, which if you guys know, you guys probably recognize the style if you've seen some of the more popular Metallica tees and Soundgarden. Durex Condoms Collegiate tee with the little swimming sperm cell. Why he's sad though? Maybe because he can't break through the Big Johnson. That was a nice little transition. <laughs> Always a classic. I also got some really sick Jesus tees. This is a really good Jesus. Jesus tee. There's literally no way I can go over every single t-shirt. This big Harley Davidson, Velvet Underground, Evanescence, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Almond Brothers, U2, which gets so much unnecessary hate. Lead Belly, Stained, AOP Star Wars. Speaking of AOPs, the AOP Snapple, the AOP Tricks, the AOP Phoenix Suns. Why do I keep talking like that? But a beautiful Miami Hurricanes. A little Casper movie tee, the dark half, Nelson Mandela, another G. Jesus tea, South Park character you do not see on tees very often, Chicago Bulls, NASCAR, country music, Lakers, sports, NASCAR, <laughs> the moron TV, Sega Dreamcast, we even got some gaming and you might think this is Matrix, but it is of course Jesus. I'm gonna have to try on some of these pieces and make a final decision of what I want to keep, what I want to sell. There's a bunch of other stuff as well. I mean like this right here, 70s Fear and Loathing, an absolute banger, but I just do not have time to show off every single shirt. And I also want to talk about more than just the pieces. I know some people really just follow me to see what pieces I end up getting, but when I started this video, I brought up the comments in the video of me spending 10K on 68 shirts, and there's a reason that I brought those comments up. I know that a lot of people will watch this video and they will think like, oh, you're an idiot. You spent so much money on clothes, yada, yada, yada. But I've been being told that I'm an idiot for spending money on clothes for over 10 years. And at times, yes, I was an idiot. I mean, I was literally homeless and I had nowhere to live, yet my priority was still trying to buy the latest Nike SB blazer that was coming out or something that I liked from Dan's Comp or Karma Loop. So I will not disagree with you when it comes comes to clothing, yes, at times I am an idiot, but I just so happened to be an idiot that got lucky and stumbled upon a way to monetize this addiction or love for clothing. A lot of the people that commented that, I could tell they weren't really into vintage, so they don't understand 
the value. I think the only thing that kind of bothers me is that people will see people place value into things and just because they don't understand why someone else values something, they will make some broad sweeping judgment about that person. And the arguments are so ridiculous. For example, some of the arguments that I would see is like, oh, these shirts retailed for $20, it's not worth $100. Like what something retails for does not determine what it is worth. Just basic econ 101, that is not what determines the value. Look at one of the first body styles of the Camaro, right? The 67 to 69 Camaro. Those all retailed for, I believe, under $20,000. And now if you were to find one in really good condition, I mean, they sell for well over 50, sometimes even 60 to $100,000. So the retail is irrelevant. And the only real argument that you would have to basically justify that and not justify this is, oh, well, it's a car, you can use it. But like, you don't need a $60,000 car. Obviously there are reasons that people place value into that car, just like people who are into clothes have their own reasons as to why they place value into clothes. To be honest, anyone that disagrees with that is probably not still watching the video, so I'm probably preaching to the choir somewhat, but I just hope that you do not judge others based off of the things that they value, because who are you to say that that thing is not valuable. I think we do that a lot just because we don't understand something. And I think people's first reaction when they don't understand is just to say that's stupid. Reselling clothing and then making YouTube videos about the clothing that I liked has changed my life forever. And if I would have just dismissed it as something stupid, I would have never had some of the opportunities that I have had throughout the years. At the end of the day, a lot of those opportunities stemmed from me making videos about my obsession or love for clothes. I don't really care what we call it, we can call it an obsession, love, addiction, whatever. I tend to say it's an addiction because yes, as a lot of you guys also pointed out, I do tend to wear the same thing over and over again. I find something I like, that becomes my uniform. But I still like clothes and I still buy a lot of stuff for myself, but it's not just about wearing the clothes for me. I enjoy a bunch of different things. I don't wanna get too deep about it because at the end of the day, I just, tend to say like, if you think it's stupid, then yeah, it's stupid, fuck it, I don't really care. I like something that may be stupid and I have no problem saying I'm an idiot for spending so much money on clothes. But I will say just maybe if you aren't into it or if you don't understand, look a little deeper instead of just casting judgment because there may be a reason and who knows, if you look a little deeper, you may find something that you love and you may even have opportunities through following that passion of yours that could change your life Forever. Anyway, shout out to every single person who commented about Nick giving them some sleepy top. You would probably have to watch the last video to understand why people were commenting that. <laughs> if you made it this far, of course, comment tatas. Thank you guys so much. I cannot say thank you enough, but I will say thank you one more time. So thank you. I appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. As always, keep living the star life and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Yeah.